Now, joining us now uh, is an extremely informed individual who we've had on before, and I appreciate him joining us. Michael Maloof writes for WND.com, World Net Daily. He specializes in international political and economic analysis, former senior security policy analyst at the Office of the Secretary of Defense. Maloof has almost 30 years of federal service, 23 of which he was in the Department of Defense. And I'm not going to go over all the stuff he was involved in in special operations, secret operations, all the rest of it, the best-selling books he's written, because we've got him for a limited period of time. But I want to get him on for a full 45 minutes sometime on the nightly news to really walk through all this. But he wrote a story a few weeks ago that got a lot of attention. Ex-DIA chief, former general, says Obama willfully allowed rise of ISIS. And before we go to Mr. Maloof, I want to play a clip of this. Uh, in September, General Thomas McEnery uh, admitted the United States helped build ISIS as a result of the Obama administration's backing some of the wrong people. Uh, but now there's been more admissions to all of this. Let's go ahead and play that clip. For the sake of our viewers, in 2012, your agency was saying, quote, the Salafists, the Muslim Brotherhood, and Al-Qaeda in Iraq are the major forces driving the insurgency in Syria. Mm -hmm. In 2012, the yeah. U.S. was helping coordinate arms transfers to those same groups. Why did you not stop that if you're worried about the rise of, quote, unquote, yeah, Islamic I, I, I mean, I hate to say it's not my job, but that my job was to, was to ensure that the, that the accuracy of our intelligence that was being presented was, was as good as it could be. And I will tell you, it, it goes before 2012. I mean, when we, were, when we were in Iraq and we still had decisions to be made before there was a decision to pull out of Iraq in 2011. I mean, it was very clear what we, we, what we were going to face. Well, I admire your frankness very on this subject. Very clear what we were going to let face. Me, let me just, to one before we move on, just to clarify once more, you are basically saying that even in government at the time, you knew those groups were around, you saw this analysis, sure. and you were arguing against it. But who wasn't listening? I think, the, I think the administration. So the administration turned a blind eye to your analysis? I don't know the, if they turned a blind eye. I think it was a decision. I think it was a willful decision. A willful decision to go support an insurgency that had Salafists, Al-Qaeda, well, and Muslim Brotherhood. a willful Brotherhood. decision to do what they're doing, which, which you have to, really, you'd have to really ask the president, what is it that he actually is doing with the, with the uh, policy that is in place? Because it is very, very confusing. I'm sitting here today, Maddie, and I, don't, I can't tell you exactly what that is. And I've been at this for a long time. Okay, well, let's go back to Iraq. And that's General Michael T. Flynn, another general, basically saying the same thing. And the full article was in Joseph Ferris G2 Bulletin, WND.com. Ex-DIA chief Obama willfully allowed rise of ISIS. Our guest Skype dropped. Do we have him back? Fantastic. Thank you. So ex-DIA chief Obama willfully allowed the rise of ISIS. Now, I know our audience knows this, but this is not getting out in the media. Two and a half years ago, it did get out, and our own military said we're not going to be part of being Al-Qaeda's Air Force. They changed the name to ISIS. They're trying to overthrow African countries. They've taken over Libya. They tried to take over. We're partially successful uh, in Egypt. Saudi Arabia is backing them. Joining us to talk about the rest of the story uh, is F. Michael Malouf. Thank you for coming on. Not the best right now, but I will do my best. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, I mean, how does the Obama administration think they can get away with this? Well, they have been. They've been doing it for years. They've known about this for, for quite some time, and it goes back uh, even to the period of the Bush administration when uh, we were supporting the uh, jihadists. Uh, to try to uh, uh, unseat uh, the, the uh, Shia influence in the Middle East. And it's just uh, proliferated now, uh, as, as uh, General Flynn points out, that um, uh, the, the idea was not the, the rise of ISIS didn't occur just because uh, uh, we, we pulled out. But the reality is we, we were supporting jihadi groups to, to unseat and overthrow uh, Assad. And by giving them arms and what have you over a period of time, and, and the Free Syrian Army, it all, they dissipated and they became uh, part of the uh, jihadist groups. And as we saw in Afghanistan with the creation of the Mujahideen, it spread 
and we also the weapons spreading that we uh, supported uh, of, among Muslims in um, in the in the period of uh, Bosnia when we were in Bosnia that helped create and and today that now forms a, a major threat to Europe. What is the strategy uh, by the different camps in Washington to openly turn loose the most radical, vicious forms of Islam? Uh, what is the end game strategy here? I'm sorry, Alex, I'm, I'm not hearing you. I understand we're having some Skype problems connecting with you. Um, we can go on the phone, perhaps. Yeah, we'll probably have to keep you on Skype, but also have you patch in via phone. We're going to uh, work on that right now with our guest today. Again, though, I understand that our audience is aware of this. I understand that our audience knows this, but the general public is ignorant on these facts. And now we have two high-level, recently retired generals, one of them who headed up the Defense Intelligence Agency, saying we followed orders to build up this group and basically create it. And we know that the rebels are ISIS, Al-Qaeda people. So, again, understand when, when ISIS has blowback and attacks this country, it's not going to be on the news that our government helped create it. And, again, most people in the government don't like the fact that this is going on. The larger strategy, and I'll get Malouf's take on it as soon as we get connected to him via some audio, is to destabilize the Middle East, keep them in turmoil fighting with each other, balkanization, divide and conquer, and then use the threat that grows in those unstable states to menace Europe, menace Africa, menace Asia, menace the United States and Canada, Australia, New Zealand, so that that threat can then be used to set up the police state here domestically, which has already been done. And for me, this is the big central issue that we're dealing with on this front. Now, while we work on getting the guest on with us today, I wanted to just take some time out to remind viewers and listeners that InfoWars funds about 70% of itself outside of outside sponsors. And that's a very good thing because it allows us to really make sure that what we're promoting and what we're pushing and selling is of the highest quality. And I've set out now with the 15 different products at InfoWarsLife.com to bring you the very best products out there. And we have a special that we ran for about a week, but it made us sell out of almost all of it. And, and I didn't want to sell out of colloidal silver, so we stopped the sale two weeks ago. We got more in, so I'm bringing the most successful sale we've ever had of silver back. It's time to get prepared for a limited time, get our silver bullet, colloidal silver, for an impressive 30% off at InfoWarsLife.com. Silver Bullet is concentrated to a powerful 30 parts per million, is based on deionized water and stores for years. I decided to run this special to help you stock up on Silver Bullet for your prepared to supply at the lowest price out there. Whether it's economic meltdown or any other collapse, experts admit loyal silver is essential to have on hand. Silver Bullet is, again, 30% off all supplies last at InfoWarsLife.com. And that's... 30% off the 1995 price. It's already one of the lowest prices out there. So that's just an insanely uh, good special. Rod in Nacogdoches, Texas, had this to say. When the country comes unraveled, forget finding a doctor. Well, unless you can trade a chicken for a visit. I believe in staying healthy because you don't want to go down in a crisis situation. This should be a staple you're preparing the stockpile. Thank you, Rod, for that good point. You're absolutely right on that front. Uh, here's Patriot Horn in Crossville, Tennessee. This colloidal silver, in my opinion, is the best one on the market, or at least the best I have been able to find. Its parts per million are the best I should find for the price. I stand with this product because it truly works and does some amazing things. My wife and I almost never get sick, but if we feel anything coming on, we double up on the silver and have beat it every time and stopped it in its tracks. 
Thank you so much for Patriot Horn in Crossville, Tennessee. And I'll tell you, it comes from the biggest top laboratory in the country that's normally $25 to $29. It's private labeled under several other big names, sold by the biggest you know, healthy food store in the country. We just private label it and discount it. It's Silver Bullet, Colloidal Silver. You can go... You can go... down in parts per million. I, I mean, you can have... 100 parts per million, <laughs> but it gets toxic at that level, according to the experts we've talked to. So 30 parts per million, we believe, is the best uh, formula. Infowarslife.com, 30% off Silver Bullet for a limited time, and Infowarsstore.com is the big blanket site. Okay, going back uh, to the defense expert uh, working in the Pentagon for 30 years, uh, Mr. Maloof, writing for WorldNet Daily, We'll have to abbreviate this interview and have him back up next week for a longer, in-depth interview and to take calls. Um, I was getting into the fact, who are the elements in Washington that want to turn loose a Saudi Arabian uh, takeover jihad? What is the end game? What are the people pushing this, thinking they're doing? What happens when there's ISIS blowback in the West, Mr. Maloof? Yeah, well, the... Uh it, it's it's the administration itself at the highest levels on, on his national security team. Uh, they, as you know, uh, Obama has been very supportive of the Saudis. He upset them greatly by uh, not backing Mubarak at a t critical time uh, that he needed them, and uh, and uh, we we see it even today. The Saudis have uh, and have announced that they plan to go on their, their own independent uh, route. But this this problem has been brewing for quite some time. The, the, this administration sought to placate the, the Saudis very early on uh, in, uh, in, backing, in backing these jihadi groups to try to oust uh, Assad. And, and at the same time, to put pressure on al-Maliki, who was clearly uh, Shia, in, in, order to, uh, bring in, in order to convince him to bring in more Sunni participation. But you had, you had them supporting constantly the, the, the Sunnis, not only in Syria... But then that had an overflow into Iraq. And uh, General Flynn saw very early on that uh, by, supporting, by supporting the Sunnis in, in Syria, there would be the, the uh, potential for setting up a caliphate or a principality, as it was called, inside of uh, Iraq as well. And uh, they predicted that two years before the administration expressed astonishment and surprise that uh, ISIS had built up the, the way that they had. And, and but it was all calculated. Uh, whether it, it's like one of those uh, things that we we create this monster and then the monster turns on us, and that's precisely what happened after uh, uh, Afghanistan. It it happened again after Bosnia by giving them the arms. We basically supported them, and in this, including this Free Syrian Army. We had ma major programs underway to provide arms to the Free Syrian Army. Most of them today, and I've talked to General Valoli about this. Uh, he says, for all intents and purposes, they've gone to ISIS and to uh, other jihadi groups today as a consequence. Mr. Maloof, you've got the contacts inside D.C. I talked to a lot of people that are currently officers in the military. They say this is one of the worst morale uh, events they've ever seen. It's killing recruitment. Uh, it's yep. really making people fundamentally question, is this government pure evil at the top? Uh, we know two years ago the military said no to being al-Qaeda's Air Force, famously with Rand Paul and Ted Cruz and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs at the time, uh, Dempsey. But, again, pulling back from this, uh, I don't see how the Obama administration thought they would get away. I guess they have gotten away with actually trying to turn al-Qaeda loose and then having its name changed to ISIS uh, I, I, I mean, the military obviously is speaking out when you've got two recently retired generals coming out saying they were ordered to do this, you know, the yeah. the administration's behind it. So if we're seeing that on the surface, what's going on beneath the surface in the military top down? Well, the military is demoralized, as you point out. Uh, this was not this was not an intelligence failure. The, the intelligence was on was spot on. On, on this projection, that this is what's going to happen if you take this course of action. And as General Flynn pointed out, it was a willful decision to ignore that intelligence and proceed with 
uh, the the, uh, the policy approach of supporting these jihadists. It's one of these deals where we basically, the administration lost control of, of them. You had Bandar going in and, and providing arms and what have you to, uh, to, to uh, jihadi groups uh, out of Saudi Arabia. And, and, and they still finance them to this day. And it wasn't just Saudi Arabia. It was UAE and Qatar and, and all of the other Sunni groups that are trying to uh, uh, break up that Shia crescent, as they describe it. Look, it's not, you know, Iran has its problems, but it's not the one that's supporting these jihadi groups going around uh, killing people, beheading them, setting up these sex, sex uh, slave uh, systems. Uh, and now, now with and supporting ISIS, which is now threatening the U.S., Saudi Arabia, it's the Sunnis. And this is, I don't know how you get a hold of, get a handle on this at this point, but it is out of control. And this administration is, is totally oblivious to it. I've studied history, but I didn't work in you know, secret operations like you did for 30 years. But I've certainly interviewed hundreds of experts. I've studied it. Am I wrong in saying this is the most bold, out of control, uh, fun the bad guys, dirty action that I've ever seen? And then it doesn't even bring down Iran and the mullahs, the corrupt uh, Sh Shiites. It seems to actually embolden them and make them look like good guys in the region. Uh, it just seems like a horrible move, even from a Machiavellian perspective. But America isn't supposed to do Machiavellian things. But it's beyond Machiavellian. It seems like, and I, and I hear this seven, eight years ago when he was running and didn't believe it. It seems like Obama may actually be either in a power play or spiritually uh, aligned with the radical Wahhabist. And that this is a imperial power play uh, to take over the Middle East, uh, and, and Obama's over there bowing down to the Saudi kings. I mean, I hate to say it, but the only way this makes sense is that the president and some of the neocons, even who we know hang out over there, uh, have secretly converted to Wahhabism. Well, that's the problem. That's they they basically are now supporting the Saudis, and they they because the they perceive the enemy to be Iran, and we've seen that kind of. Of, of discussion going on as a result of the nuclear agreement and all the uh, discussion that has surrounded that, but it but this has emboldened uh, Obama to to uh, uh, continue this. I think what's happened is that they probably began to put the brakes on a little bit, but it was too late. It it, it, get, get, it has gotten out of control. These guys have come into their own. They're able to get weapons. They're they're heavily financed uh, as a result of the oil uh, stuff that they've been able to acquire. Now even the Saudis in recent days have tried to team up with uh, Moscow to no longer and and with Syria to actually be a, a go between with Syria to to uh, no longer try to topple Assad but try to wow. offset ISIS's influence. I mean the whole thing is just turned around again. So ISIS is even double crossing Saudi Arabia. Oh yeah. Oh absolutely. You see they Saudi Arabia was supporting ISIS so that they wouldn't attack Saudi Arabia, but that's no longer valid. I mean, now they're big, now they do have uh, eyes on Mecca and Medina, and uh, and they they used to be able to pay bribes. Uh, 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 one of the, one of the one of the uh, princes would go over to uh, pay off uh, Al Qaeda years ago, not to invade Saudi Arabia, but uh, now they become ISIS has become so so big. I mean, my I've written other stories that suggest that by taking down Northern Africa. They're they're and laying groundwork in, um, in in Libya. This is forming the basis now for a takeover of all of the African continent. They are spreading like like wildfire, and they and they're acting very independent independently. Although they swear allegiance to uh, al Baghdadi and to and to ISIS, but he's basically allowing sure. these groups to do their thing, and that's what we're seeing today. And now it's out of control. When I asked the Defense Department recently. Uh, at a press interview, uh, what what is our policy toward these toward these other uh, groups that are forming us? We're in allegiance. They said our focus is only on Iraq and Syria. Well, what that focus clearly is is uh, is, sure. is too too little, too late. Well, I was against going into Iraq because I thought it would stir up radical elements and actually make them the underdog and victims, and would empower radical elements of Islam. I'm no rocket scientist, but I think you know we see that's the case. 
Yeah. But but now all over Europe they're arresting members of parliaments, uh, city council people. If they say radical Islam has to be dealt with, you know, it's like the Nazis, which I think it is, then they're arresting people. They're fining people. And so there's this bizarre alliance with the socialist communist left in the United States. And I see feminists promoting Islam like it's a cultural thing to put bags on women's heads and radical Islam and not let them drive cars and sexually mutilate them. But then if I wear pants and I'm a man, that inherently is bad. But then radical Islam is good. This seems like the West is trying to commit suicide. Well, they, they again, it, it's, this is a problem that has gotten out of control and we need to put it back into. I don't know how you put that genie back into the bottle at this point except to uh, prepare for the worst. And, well, you were a Pentagon uh, analyst. What do you think is going to end up happening now that ISIS, I mean, we, we went from Al-Qaeda being basically disabled and falling apart to now ISIS, what, 10 times bigger than Al-Qaeda, 20 times? Oh, yeah, they're, they're spreading like crazy. I see them spreading into uh, caucuses. In fact, I was talking to some uh, of my contacts in, uh, in the country of Georgia. And they're getting a lot of recruits out of there now. That's a Christian country, predominantly an Eastern Orthodox country. And, and a lot of the leadership today of ISIS, the top, the top military strategist for ISIS today is a Georgian. <laughs> but he's Muslim. He, he's out of the Pankisi Gorge. But now, now you have, then, then you have it spreading in clearly into South Asia and, uh, and, 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 and particularly Pakistan. I, I did a story recently quoting one of my... Uh, very discreet sources in Afghanistan, part of our U.S. military. He basically told me that the Pakistani ISI, the in, in, Inter-Service uh, uh, Intelligence Directorate, is now funding ISIS in Afghanistan, in, in addition to the Taliban. And the Taliban, because now that Omar is dead, they're now switching allegiance to ISIS. So this thing is just accumulating like 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 a... Uh, like a snowball going down. Sure. The what is the White House going to do when there's more ISIS attacks? We've already had two. What are they going to do when there's bigger ISIS attacks? I, th I think undoubtedly it's going to happen in Europe or here at least. Uh, yeah. I mean, how are they going to spin that? Well, I, I think Obama basically has washed his hands. He's already looking to uh, post to to retirement. So he, he, as you pointed out, he wants to, and others have pointed out that he wants to find a billion dollars to, to establish his legacy. That's what he's focusing on. They, they they basically have washed their hands of this, and they're doing nothing about it. And that, there is no leadership out of the White House. Sure. And this is this is what's the problem. Well, I, I used to have a lot of insiders say, Alex, there are some conspiracies, there are combines, there are bad groups, but mainly it's ineptitude, laziness, and cronyism. And I think more and more that is what's happening, because you look at all the people they've got running the State Department now and, and, and ordering the Pentagon around, I've studied these people. I've read their writings. They know less than I do about geopolitics, and they're running things. This is dangerous. Yeah, we're in trouble. We're in trouble right now, and it's going to take someone with a. Uh, we we've got to we got to begin weaning from the Saudi, placating the Saudis, and and really start hitting the the financial flows where these uh, people are getting their money from, and be able to to deal with that and and actually work with our allies to try and put a stop to it. Now, even the even the British and the French were involved with us in, in backing these uh, jihadi groups when, at, a, at a time when we were thinking of trying to overthrow Assad. We should Michael Maloof, do five more minutes with us. We're back in 70 seconds. I want you to be able to finish up and talk about your idea. Samantha Powers, all these people are playing general. And what's happening is the United States is getting played. And we've had a lot of generals, foreign leaders say the world's the most dangerous position it's probably ever been in. Meanwhile, Obama, remember, said that since he's been in, the world's the most stable it's ever been. And it's not about bashing Obama. Uh, I mean, as much as I didn't like Bill Clinton, uh, geopolitically, uh, he wasn't as bad as what we see now. F. Michael Maloof, we got about four minutes left in this segment. Other points you were making and, and any other solutions that you think could somehow stop ISIS uh, before they start attacking the West? Well, we're actually, you know, we're actually going to have to increase intelligence and, and really focus overseas on, on intelligence gathering. But we've got to have people at the top who are willing to be 
to, to take actionable intelligence and act on it. But the FBI is too busy a, watching the Tea Party. Well, uh, they, they've got to change that whole. You see, the whole the whole uh, uh, mindset has got to change because we do have a major threat. In addition, on the on the international side, we've got to start working with people that we don't regard as our buddies, but who have who are like minded and wanting to counter terror, uh, like the Russians, maybe even the Iranians, to to uh, try to deal with this. And and now that the Saudis are now working with the Russians once again, perhaps we've got a an unholy alliance here that to to try and and deal with this problem. We're dealing with people who are who are rogues in many many respects, whom we don't like uh, politically. But we have a we all have a common problem, and and sure. this, this really means getting our allies and our and the even some of our adversaries together to work on this to to deal with this problem because it is transnational. It is almost it's worldwide now, and it's it's out of control. Doesn't it show? How out of control it is that just two years ago, we know Saudi Arabia was menacing Russia with its proxy jihad groups, uh, these Wahhabist groups. And now it's spread oh, yeah. so bad that they're working with Russia to try to put it out because they're even scared of it. Absolutely. See, the, 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 the tables have turned on them and uh, they're, they're, they're really fearful for their own existence at this point. And I think this is where, um, you know... <laughs> We're, I know it's not a popular thing to say, but we may have to work with the Iranians to deal with ISIS. They're the only ones who are really out there fighting them along with, and we need to, be, to start arming the Peshmerga. Well, sure. Peshmerga I mean, if the Iranians the were Kurds. invading all these countries and killing people, I'd say go to war with them. I mean, it's not like we're choosing any sides here. We've got no. these, these ISIS people are just, who really runs ISIS? Well, it sounds like it's coming out of the White House, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, we, I, we basically have supported them. We, we basically nurtured their existence. Uh, this is the problem that I see. We basically have uh, uh, allowed him to exist, and, to, we, and, and we gave them arms. We helped to create in their creation, and now uh, they are on their own, and we've got to do something about it. And we've got to work with allies and friends, even people that we, would on, on, on the surface, would not want to work with but we're going to be compelled to work with because this problem is so uh, ingrained. F. Michael Maloof, writing for WND.com. Are there any other sites or, or documents that we should read other than your in-depth analysis at World Debt Daily? What are some other good things to look at? Well, I do a survey of all... all uh, uh, Things that I can that I can come across, even even uh, weird, uh, weird websites. I even I even go on uh, uh, the Iranian websites and see what they're saying, or, or, and uh, also the Saudi websites, see what they're saying, the Russian websites. I see what the other people are saying, so that you know you know where they're coming from. Uh, so monitor, read everything, but believe nothing. Good. Well, yeah, you got to read everything, and and then you make your own judgment based upon that information. The other problem you got to watch out for will be the Turks. And I, I just leave that in closing because uh, they, they are about ready to implode. And Let's I, and, have you back and, next week on the Nightly News, if you can do it, to talk about geopolitically what the destabilization of the Middle East means and what Turkey falling could do. Thank you, Mr. Malouf. We'll be back. Thank you.